Today's show is the weekly edition of The Art World this week in the sense that what we are doing is we are looking at um, what is latest and as I'm sure our viewers know, we what we're experiencing at the moment is something that is a rapidly moving situation. It is one in which things are changing not only on a weekly basis but certainly on a daily basis and so with this in mind i'm here to update you as to what's happening the art world this week i've got three highlights for you today the first one from artnet news is nothing prepares you for this the second piece which is in uh actually artnet as well, we have got Germany having rolled out a staggering amount of support for people in the arts. And last but not least, we have also got 2,500, and I imagine a, num a growing number of, uh, of museums you can now visit virtually, and that is on hyperallergic. So let's look at that first piece of news. Uh, this is published in Artnet. Com. This is by Javier Pez. This is actually from March 27th, so a couple of days ago. There could be more museums that have been, um, who've added this, um, become this, or uh, taken, taken to this initiative rather. So I have got an image here, and that image is showing a number of, kind of gallery directors from the UK. We have got director of Tate Modern, Frances Morris, that was actually a big step for women in the art world, her taking on a big budget museum, that's where women had previously struggled. You might have had a lot of women museum directors, but not that top level with big budgets. So we've got Frances Morris, we've also got director of Tate Britain, Alex Farquharson, we've got Tate director Maria Balshaw, former director of Tate Liverpool, Francesco Manacorda, and director of Tate Santavs, Anne Barlow in that picture. So this reads, the directors of London's biggest art museums, like many of their colleagues across Europe and North America, before them were faced with little choice but to abruptly close their institutions last week as the global health crisis deepened. And indeed, it was fascinating on Saturday evening to be listening to Grayson Perry on Radio 4 on the BBC in the UK. Um, that was actually from his series of talks that he did, a series of lectures that he did back in 2013. He had a live audience there at Tate Modern. He was talking and you could hear this crowd behind him. I think it was a real crowd that was there with him in the, in the museum. And I thought, aha, this is definitely dating from that 2013 series because right now, you know that Grayson Perry will not doing, be doing a show with a live audience there in front of him. But what we can do is we can find other ways of working, such as what we're doing here with the Be Smart About Art show. So they have closed the doors to their museums across the Tate brand. And then it says this, but unlike their peers in several European countries and American states who were told to shutter by their governments, the UK's arts institutions had to make that tough call themselves. After a frantic few days in which one institution after another closed its doors, directors shared their thoughts with Artnet News about the role of museums in this emergency, the challenges ahead, and their hopes. And as we turn the page, it's kind of nice having a sheet of paper, really, because this is not all the time that we have this. I could be scrolling, but why scroll when I could be using recycled paper? I am kidding. Uh, and their fears about what the world will look like on the other side. I mean, some recent news in the UK from this past weekend is that maybe the shutdown is, or the lockdown is not going to be for three weeks. Maybe it's actually going to be three to six months. Will it be lightened during some of that time? Will it be toughened during some of that time? This is all breaking news. We don't know what I'm going to be reporting to you this time next week. I mean, if we could tell that, that then hey-ho, life would be different. But this is a rapidly evolving situation, including for our industry. And how are you? please answering the questions, how are you taking actions yourself for the art world, your art world, in terms of engaging with people? The director of the British Museum, Hartwig Fisher, summed up feelings of many when he called the crisis, and listen to this, the biggest challenge we faced since the war. And, the war. and indeed, he's talking about World War II. Uh, we've not seen anything like this in lives. Closing the museum is difficult and very emotional, of course, but we went fast. There was absolutely no alternative. We have all sorts of scenarios that we have developed over the years, but something of this magnitude is a different dimension. We have a crisis plan that kicks in and priorities in front of us, staff, visitor securities, but a pandemic as it is evolving right now is a new experience. So, I mean, and honestly, this is from 
individual artists in your studio right through to the museums. And I think actually one thing that's worth pointing out to that point is that one of the most amazing things about being in control of your own business, of your own enterprise, of your projects, your initiatives, when you are running a micro enterprise and a micro enterprise is going to have maybe one person, it might just be you, or it could be maybe just a few people, but it's not actually as big as to call it a small business perhaps. So a micro enterprise has the ability to just turn on a dime. What you can do is you can go, you know what, this isn't working and therefore what we're gonna do is change our direction and we're going to change and do this new thing immediately. So that is a really powerful tool that you have got to use. And this adds, we must make sure that those who do fall ill have the care that they need. But I think that it's very important that our museums are capable of shaping something in the face of this immense adversity. I think that it is what we will focus on, offering opportunities to think about humanity in a deep historical dimension and look at how people have faced challenges. And that's the point I wanted to get to, was how important a role art plays. And we can see that in the museums. And so let's think about it in terms of what you, what you are doing with your work. Is that work that you're producing? Is that work that you're create, cur curating? Um, whatever it is, tell those stories, tell those stories, of those lives have that, have that inspiration and let that come through. People really do need not just positivity, but they, but something to get them thinking about something else, you know, not just seeing what the next headline is necessarily. So we're taking, we're taking what these headlines in the art world are and we're thinking, how can you then apply them for your own career basically right now not knowing how long this is going to go on now let's look at that second piece of news in artnet news we have got by kate brown germany has rolled out a staggering 50 billion euros aid package for small businesses that and that will include one person businesses just to say that boosts artists and galleries and puts other countries to shame Right now, this says the German federal government is stepping in with a sweeping aid package for the country's creative and cultural sectors. According to a press release shared by the Ministry of Culture and, S Culture and Reports in the German press as well, a staggering 50 billion euros, that's about $54 million in backing will be provided specifically to small businesses and freelancers. That's very interesting, including those from the cultural, creative and media sectors. That makes me think of so many artists and even curators I know who might freelance and do different things, maybe a bit of teaching. It could be work with kids. It could be community work. It could be graphic design. They're all, there's all kinds of things that creative folks end up doing. So that's really, that's really completely brilliant. Let's let the world look at Germany here for a second. And then what was the date? This was also the 25th of March. The news from the ministry comes in less than two weeks after Germany first made its promise of support. We know the hardships, we know the desperation, said Culture Minister Monica Gruters in the statement. Monica adds, the cultural sector in particular is characterized by a high proportion of self-employed people who now have problems with their livelihoods. Compare that to the UK, where self-employed are able to claim 80% on their average month monthly earnings based on the last three years. They cannot make that claim until June. That's going to cover all of March, all of April, and all of May. So the challenge then in the UK is getting through into the time. I'm from the States. It doesn't sound like the States is actually doing that brilliantly in terms of packages. And I do know that it is also varying on a state by state basis. And Monica said that the federal government is wholly aware of the importance of the creative industries. Isn't that fantastic? For that, for the importance of, of, our, of our industry to be, to be and the role that we play in society to, to be recognized. Adding that help is coming as quickly as with, as, uh, and with as little bureaucracy as possible. So there's, it's a three part package in summary. And it's really, actually, it's really brilliant insight. So it's worth going and checking out Artnet News. If you go look for those two articles, the first one, if you look up Kate Brown's articles, you will find this Germany package one. And then if you look up, let's have a look. I have a memory for numbers, not names. Uh, Javier, that's J-A-V-I-E-R. PES, PES. If you look up, nothing prepares you for this. You'll come up with those two articles. And last but not least, this is something that you can certainly action now, which is checking out two and a half thousand museums that you can now visit virtually. And let's hope that, that number is growing because my goodness, don't we need some culture right now. So this is, as I mentioned before, an hyper allergic. Let me just read you a little snippet. There's no point in sugarcoating it. 
Things are bad and they're about to get worse before they get any better. COVID-19 virus has brought the world to a halt, shuttering all art and cultural institutions in affected countries and putting millions worldwide in quarantine, quarantine self-imposed or not. I think I'm on my 20th day of social isolation and kind of not being out and seeing people. Meanwhile, if you're feeling hungry for art while you're stranded at home, how about we don't say stranded? How about we say we're here? doing our thing that we're doing as responsible citizens. You might be pleased to know that 2,500 world-class museums and galleries are now offering virtual tours and online collections on Google's arts and culture pages. And for opera fans, that's actually, it's great to think about different forms of culture too. The Metropolitan Opera in New York is streamlining concerts for free. So that's amazing. I mean, that's going to be quite late, I guess, for people in Europe. So we've got to see if there's some daytime shows perhaps ever, but that's amazing. So you need to look at Google's arts and culture pages and find these two and a half thousand museums that are opening up for us virtually online. So the collection, this is the Google Arts and Culture Collection, includes many of the world's biggest museums, Tate Modern, British Museum in London, the Van Gogh Museum. I love the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam. If you haven't been, this is your opportunity to go virtually, which is incredible. What I liked when I visited the museum was that they didn't only have Van Gogh on display. I recall, I believe it was a floor below the main exhibition. They, didn't, they, they also had pieces by Van Gogh's contemporaries and it really provided amazing context I and mean, it was probably one of my favorite museum exp experiences ever yet in my life and now I've got access to 2,499 others at least and the and also the Rieks Museum in Amsterdam and the Museum of Modern Art and the Whitney Museum in New York among hundreds of others thousands of others according to this and most you can browse through entire exhibitions online and in many you can also walk through the museum using google's street view so they highlight 12 museums and they're all amazing so go check out google that is google's that's google arts and culture and you can go visit all of those museums again how can you do the same yourself how can you perhaps offer some virtual tours. Now I know I've not used this function myself, but Facebook does enable you to do a 360 degree tour. So that's one function that you could do. You could start creating some albums on a Facebook professional page if you've not done this yet. So maybe you do one album of, of one exhibition's videos and photographs, and you could do another album of something else. So just think about all the different kinds of ways that you can you can share your content online and try to save as much time for yourself as possible as well. Things that I'm thinking about is maybe do setting up some cross posting with IFTTT, that's if this, then that, that's platform that's free of charge. It enables you to essentially connect your different social profiles and have actions that are prompted. Say for example, when you do a single post, single image post on Instagram, it might automatically cross post over to your Facebook page, or you could actually automatically make it include the image and em embedded into a tweet as well. There are all different kinds of amazing things that you can do with IFTTT. So using the tools well are going to be important. Now coming up later this week will indeed be our session tomorrow, which is gonna be at five o'clock UK. That will be at 12 o'clock PM uh, Eastern, and that would be 11 AM Central and going back from there. Then we've got at 9 AM, on the west coast of North America, we're going to be looking at art business and specifically, what on earth are you doing right now thinking about uh, when is the best time to send an email campaign, if at all? What about still continuing to sell your art online? Is that even appropriate? So we're addressing that tomorrow. On Wednesday, I'm taking questions from Be Smart About Art members. So that's in Be Smart About Art question time. And on Thursday, we'll have Winston Peters come along and talk with us about the distinction between the art world and the art business and how exactly those apply today. Everyone, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here live with me. And if you're watching the replay, Awesome to see you as well. Do check out what we're doing over with our membership community at patreon.com forward slash be smart about art. Go and subscribe today. Take a deeper dive in the community. You can join the member masterclass weekly on Thursdays, immediately after the Thursday show. You can access all kinds of other resources, our private Facebook group and more. And to check out everything about be smart about art, check out the hashtag be smart about art, the at handle and the website besmartaboutart.com. As ever, I'm Susan J. Mumford. I am here to help you thrive in a changing art world as the founder of Be Smart About Art. We're dedicated to supporting you 
throughout these increasingly changing times so that you can carry on as a creative being seeing your dreams become reality. Ciao for now, signing out from Lewis in East Sussex, England, and I look forward to seeing you in future editions.